Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. This is actually take two. I was just going live moments ago, and my phone's acting up. Uh, my apologies for that. So this is take two, but that's what happens What we're doing live videos. It's kind of the exciting thing about being live, but also kind of the frustrating thing about it um, as well. So hopefully we won't have any other interruptions um, or, or retakes. So today's uh, Whitblock Wednesday uh, continues our conversation that we've been having the last couple of weeks on contemporary printmakers in Japan. And um, today we'll be discussing the work of Sadao Watanabe, who is a stencil printmaker, not actually a woodblock printmaker. And his work is very similar in the sense that he worked with stencils like Yoshitoshi Mori. And we discussed Yoshitoshi Mori a couple of weeks ago. So if you didn't um, catch that Woodblock Wednesday, I encourage you to go to my website, uh, collectingjapaneseprints.com, and go to the archive of Woodblock Wednesdays, and you can access it from there. Um, but before we get into Watanabe and his artistry, just wanted to say a few words about um, where, where he places in the history of Japanese printmaking. He's a contemporary print artist and was um, really interested in making stencil prints. He was in the textile industry like uh, Yoshitoshi Mori and, and he became sort of enamored by the work of Serizawa who was one of Japan's most celebrated stencil uh, printmakers. He was also a textile worker. And so Serizawa being um, one of the main proponents of the Minge movement of Japan, which is sort of a folk art tradition uh, of Japan. So these Minge artists were influenced by traditional arts and crafts, but sort of worked um, using these traditional techniques to produce work that was for the populace. They weren't, they didn't consider themselves highbrow uh, artists, but more in line with traditional Edo period artisans. And they, they saw an inherent value in Japan's traditional um, artisan crafts. And so they, they basically continued that tradition, achieving new heights of, of beauty, perfection within the, the, the realm of their discipline. And Serizawa was one who was um, very active in making um, stencil prints. And Watanabe, being in the, in the textile industry, um, so was already working with stencils and was very familiar with the technique, like Mori, but when he met um, Serizawa, he was really enamored by the idea of producing artwork for everyday people. Um, and so the idea, you know, this goes back to the Edo period where a print would cost the price of a bowl of noodles. Well, that was a very sort of democratic way of producing artwork where everyone could enjoy it. And so uh, Watanabe was really influenced by that idea. He wanted to produce artwork that was accessible to people, financially at least. And, and then at the same time, he also had a conversion to Christianity. And this is kind of fascinating because I don't think of any other artist that I can think of um, in Japanese printmaking that dedicated his entire career to producing artwork that was just um, so sort of reflective of their spirituality. You know, there have been artists who certainly produce artwork that was religious. Um, and you could, I mean, you know, there's a lot of Munakata designs that I can think of that were Buddhist or Shinto deities. Um, and, you know, there's a couple others that sort of dabbled. Um, but Watanabe can, basically dedicated his entire life to producing work that reflects his, his religious beliefs. He, his prints depict the Old and New Testament. Um, and he, he, he sort of included things about his own culture, being Japanese, in the images of, of these traditional um, sort of images from the Bible that were not 
part of his culture. And they, these images that he created, these designs, these prints, are beautiful synthesis of, of two traditions coming together. And um, so without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look and we can um, discuss it further. So I'm gonna back up a little bit so you could see. I've, I've some books out here. Uh, these are the various books that are available on Sadao Watanabe. Um, three of these are available in my uh, bookstore. So if you want to learn more about his prints um, or be able to go through these wonderful catalogs and look at other designs he produced, I re highly recommend these books. And as I always say, before you start collecting any particular artist, um, you should buy uh, reference books. They're, they're vital in helping you sharp, sharpen your eye um, and um, so that you could kind of discern which designs you'd like um, to acquire. Now, the work that I want to discuss today um, is this print that's on my website. In fact, I actually just sold this print and to a really great client, and she sort of inspired me to discuss this print with all of you. Um, we were just uh, emailing back and forth about the print, and I thought, well, you know, we're, we're discussing currently contemporary print artists. I just talked um, about Yoshitoshi Mori. Why not Watanabe? So just to give you a little bit of information, Sadao Watanabe was born in 1913, um, he was born in Tokyo, and he spent most of his life in Tokyo, and he passed away in 1996. So um, that's, near, that's over 20 years ago. It's funny, I was just thinking it was like 10, 12 years ago. But no, but in my mind, I still think it's about like 2010. <laughs> so I don't know why. It's just this mental block I have um, to the, the year. But But anyway, so this print... Uh, was done in 1965, and uh, it depicts um, Jonah and the whale, the story of Jonah and the whale. And for those of you who don't uh, know the story, I won't go into the, all the particular details of the story, but the, the, the main premise is that Jonah was uh, called upon by God to do some things for him and to, you know, to go into a town and, and, and do, do some things, and he was just called to do God's work. And he kept kind of pushing God away and, and saying, well, you know, I don't really want to do this. Or, um, you know, he didn't feel up to the challenge. He, he all of, for all of the reasons why people decide not to do things, that those were the things that, um, those were the ideas going through Jonah's mind. Doubts, uncertainties, all of those things. Until one day, you know, well, you know, Jonah um, is being taught a lesson by God, and he's cast from a boat. Here's the, the boat. There's all these people that are just shocked by the fact that Jonah is, um, in, he, I think he's swallowed by a big, you know, storm. There's this big wave that comes over, and then he, 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 he's in the water, and then a whale <clears throat> excuse me, comes up and just swallows him. And I believe he's in the belly of the whale for some time. And then he realizes what he needs to do. And he finds his resolve and, and he goes out and does it. So that is the, the story with a broad brush. Now, um, what, what I want to talk about really is, is the, the design that Watanabe masterfully um, produces um, to tell a story. And, you know, what I like about Watanabe's work is that it, it harkens back to stained glass windows in many ways. And before, in the, in the church, before uh, individuals were able to read um, the actual biblical stories, the artwork in churches served as a means to express all the, the stories within the, the, the Bible. So all of the sermons and all of the stories within the, the tradition of, of, the, of Christianity was represented by the artwork in the church, especially the early part part of the church. After the Reformation, there was a less emphasis on the images. But if we're looking at the earlier part of the church, the stained glass windows, the paintings, the statues, they were all produced in a way that have a built-in narrative where you could easily access the story from what is happening in the image. 
And um, here in the, in the in this design, it's easily accessible. You see the 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 big boat, which kind of reminds me a little bit of his nose of his um, uh, yeah his nose art um, um, boats you see in other prints. Um, so the boat has that kind of uh, shape to it that you know he he reuses over and over again. And then overhead we have these storm clouds, and they're done in this sort of pattern. And the pattern is in, it's very interesting because it reminds me of Japanese textiles. The pattern's repetitive, it's very similar. And so there's that quality of Japanese textiles in there. Um, and, and then the, the wave itself also has that quality of Japanese textiles. And the wave facing to the right is also reminds me of the great wave Hokusai's great wave which was going in that same direction and um so you have all these figures up on the boat and they're all sort of shocked by what just happened and note how the faces and the, basically the entire image is rendered in, in, in thicker lines that, utilizing black and and it, they echo stained glass windows. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that's really fascinating. Um, you, he, um, Sadao Watanabe is, you know, bringing in this sort of, this Western stained glass window sort of aesthetic. And, but he's also synthesizing it. Um, what's also fascinating is the, the, the paper that's used it's kind of a thicker paper that has been crumbled up by hand. Um, and that, that's done to create a really interesting texture. And it reads as if it's actually a textile. If It's almost like if it's a cloth, a piece of cloth. And it, it is not. It's just handmade Japanese paper. You could see um, in the verso, you could see the wrinkling on the paper so much more. Um, it's much more evident. And so here, um, looking at the story, we have Jonah falling into the, the water. And then we have these two very large fish. And assuming one of them is about to just sort of swallow him up. The interesting thing here, I want to point out, that these whales are in fact not whales. They're giant catfish. You could even see the the whiskers of the catfish here there's a there's the one here the green one he kind of looks hungry he's kind of looking at him and this guy is just kind of like whoa what's going on um so these catfish are so japanese they they are not the part of the story um of jonah and the whale though i should this is an aside the the story of jonah and the whale Everyone says it's a whale, but in the original Hebrew, it just means big fish. So it may not have been a whale as we understand whales um, to be. Perhaps Sada Watanabe knew that and, and reworked the, the fish as um, catfish. Or maybe he didn't, but he was, <clears throat> excuse me, he was famous with um, reworking images to add Japanese or cultural uh, a Japanese cultural context within these traditional Western, um, uh, you know, images of, of Christianity or even um, um, a Judeo-Christian traditions because it's both the Old and the New Testament. So it, it's fascinating. Th these these uh, catfish remind me of another design. Um, it's a banquet. I think it's the feast at Canaan, or uh, or it was at a wedding at Canaan, or, or I, I don't recall exactly the design um, title. But it is a feast where th when there, I think Jesus is there and a, and a group of people at the wedding and they're feasting and they, there's a big lobster, big lobster on the table, you know. And that's funny because first of all. A lobster is not something they would have eaten in biblical time because it's not kosher. And Jesus would not have had uh, a, a big lobster. But that is so Japanese, this emphasis on seafood. And, and so the big lobster was more about 
Sadao Watanabe <laughs> than, than the story. But that's sort of the charming aspect of, of, of his work, at least for me. Uh, you really see this synthesis of Japanese culture um, that's, that's in these designs that are you don't normally see them um, in that way outside of his work. So these big catfish are definitely connecting to that point that is that it's more Japanese and it's uh, it's Sadao Watanabe's contribution to these um images that you know he adds that Japanese um quality I, I think th that's quite um quite cool so I'm going to zoom in so you could see that design here you could see this this was an edition of 50 and um I should probably point out that in terms of his prints that's kind of the uh, the, the typical size of, of his work at this time in, in the 60s is in the 60s, 70s is when he was at the height of his power um, artistically and he was producing a really wonderful designs. This is one of them, by the way. I'd say this is in the top 10 designs from his body of work. And, um, you know, in the, there, were, there were 50. Some of them are, are less than that. Some of them are 25. Um, and there's a couple examples where he did more than 50, but generally speaking, they're 50. And so um, as a whole, his prints are not that easy to find. If you're interested in a particular design, it may take a while to, to, um, to find because, you know, when you think about it, 50 designs being produced and then being sent out into the world, who knows what happens to these prints? A lot of them end up in in public collections. And we could we'll talk about that in a minute, but I just want to zoom in so you could see the, the colors and the design at play here. And you could see the, the, the wave effect again is a very, has a very textile type of quality. The, the, the rhythm, the repetition of the waves, as we saw in the, the sky, the clouds, the rain clouds overhead, as well as the texture, all of that is so Japanese and, and, and very much part of the textile trade. You know, I, I, and this is a, a interesting conversation because, um, you know, I was a religious studies uh, major in college. I studied both philosophy and religion, though I didn't study uh, Christianity or Western religion. It it, it is it's been an interest of mine, um, and I I always just love engaging in with artwork that has that narrative that that the the artist wanted to convey the uh, a particular narrative in this case a biblical story. And I just love how the story, which is not native to Watanabe, uh, has been sort of in, adopted into his life in such a way that it has come out um, and expressed in a very Japanese way. I, I think that's just wonderful. And Watanabe was producing his artwork with, he was producing it for everyone. He was not producing artwork um, that he thought was a highbrow fine art. He, because he was interested in the Minge movement and a follower and a student of Surizawa, he wanted his artwork to be put, you know, to be hung in people's homes. Um, he didn't see his artwork um, beyond it being modest, um, but worthy of collecting because of the images, not necessarily because of him. He was a very humble man. Um, you could tell from the, his writings about his, his work, which I think is fascinating, and it is very much part of the Minge movement. Um, but the irony is that it, actually his prints are in, in major institutions around the world. Um, we have some here in Chicago at the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, but quickly, you know, just share a story. Uh, when I was in Rome, about 10 years ago, I went to the Vatican, you know, the Vatican Museum, and I was just sort of walking around there after 
uh, the, you know, dealing with the long line of the Sistine Chapel, I turned a corner, and then there was this room with, with I would say, two dozen Sadao Watanabe prints of this size hung. And I just thought it was very charming to be able to see uh, his work in that context. It was hung in a room that was adjacent to other fine artwork showing very similar um, scenes. So Watanabe is very much part of that canon, um, but also he's contributed to that canon with his own uh, twist, his own sort of unique Japanese aesthetic that, that, that's been sort of added on to it. So, you know, I, I think that's cool. And I keep saying that because I, I think it's a, a point that always hits home when I look at his artwork. So I see several people are now joining us. So uh, I, I want to welcome all of you and, and feel free to um, start the video uh, from the beginning where I give a little bit more context to what we're discussing today. So um, yeah, I'm going to zoom in one more time so you could see the paper and how that paper, that really beautiful handmade um, paper that's been wrinkled by hand that creates that really wonderful textile kind of quality to it. So one last time, this is sort of a, a overview of all the books available for Sadao Watanabe, some of which are on uh, in my bookstore. Um, and I'll just point out here in the scene of The Last Supper, there's a Japanese puffer fish as part of The Last Supper. That it, that's very cute, uh, very, very cute and, and very Japanese in a scene that's obviously not Japanese. And, you know, one last thing I'll say about this uh, print that is pretty much part of the Japanese sort of aesthetic, particularly contemporary art. There is a sort of acuteness, or the Japanese term is kawaii, uh, that is sort of in his prints. This is a very uh, foreboding, <laughs> it should be a foreboding design. We have um, Jonah being uh, uh, casted into the, uh, the sea, and then we have these two giant fish or whales about to, one of them is about to swallow him. You know, that's a scary moment. But the way that Watanabe renders um, the image, there's also some humor in, into it. The, these two giant catfish, which traditionally in Japanese folkloric um, um, tales, they're, they're menacing creatures. They're, the One of them, or these giant catfish live under Tokyo, at least the story goes, and the earthquakes happen when they start rumbling about and moving around. Well, so catfish are sort of a symbol of, you know, danger or, or, or something negative happening. And in this case, he's using catfish to tell this story. But at the same time, they're, they're, they're depicted in this really sort of cute way. And that is very Japanese, taking something that is negative, something that's scary, and then making it into, giving it sort of an outer shell of, of cuteness. Um, th that might help people cope and understand and sort of accept s some of the negativity that happens in life. And, you know, so Japan has mascots pretty much for everything. And some of the mascots represent darker things, darker themes, darker subjects. And yet the mascots themselves aren't that dark. They're kind of cute. And so I think that's also what's playing out here. There's this sort of cuteness inherent in, in these, in the quality of, the, of this design that helps sort of lighten a little bit of the, the tone of, of this scene. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our, our latest installment on Wood Black Wednesday. Uh, Sadao Watanabe is a, 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 an artist that I, I don't think gets his due. He's been overlooked uh, the last few years, I think. 
and um, I think he's he's much more interesting than just he is always pegged in this uh, well religious. He's the guy that does the Judeo-Christian imagery. He does do that, but there's a lot more there to unpack. Uh, him, his images also speak a lot about Japanese culture, and and there's this there's this interesting um, history of Christianity, Judeo-Christianity in in um, in Japan some of which has not been um, all positive, but it goes all, it goes all way back. And so it's worth studying, it's worth sort of engaging on, and his images sort of, um, they encourage us to look further and look deeper. And they're not just as two-dimensional as, as many people who, who shy away from religious um, images might think. Um, and so, you know, I, I hope that I brought some food for thoughts uh, to some of you. And let me know if you have any questions about Sada Watanabe or, or if you're interested in seeing something in the future. Feel free to place a comment below and I'd be happy to um, create a video on a subject that you'd like to see. So thanks. Um, and if you haven't had a chance, go to my website. There's a wonderful sale going on of Japanese prints from different genres. I also have a wonderful bookstore which we'll be adding to um, in the coming weeks. We will, we're also working really hard on getting a new exhibition of fantastic things. Um, you'll be hearing um, from me about that in the coming weeks as well. So thanks again for joining me and see you next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Bye.